I had a week off from work, so I locked in and made a multiplayer game. Last year, I started with a host and client type of multiplayer game where one of the players also is the server. But writing the code for that is very complicated because you have to do pretty much everything twice to tell like, oh, am I the server or am I the client? So this year I decided to separate that and go with a dedicated server. Having the server separate from the clients made it so that the clients only manage their player and then the server manages everything else. In order to sync the position of the players, I have this multiplayer synchronizer which syncs the position and the rotation of the player always. And I also have it syncing when the sound effects start playing for this player. And what this helps with is in physics process, instead of doing all the calculations on every single client. You only do the calculations for the player that you own, and then you tell the rest of the server with the synchronizer what you came up with. In order to support the multiplayer synchronizers, we have to have the same scene tree layout on the client and the server. So you'll see I have my game tree, and then this player's node, and inside of the player node, I have all these different character bodies, which are my players. On the server side, I have to replicate that same layout so the same path with the names. So it's game tree slash players slash, and then these are the multiplayer peer IDs. So we have the multiplayer synchronizers handling position and rotation, but how do we handle something like health and damaging? So on the client, we have this hurt box that when we hit something that has a health component, we say that, hey, we hit this. So we got to tell the server to damage that entity. So I call this server RPC function send the RPC function to the server, tell it who I am, tell it who I'm hitting, tell it how much damage to do. Then if we look at the server interface that we have here, it is a big interface and all of these RPC functions have to match on both the client and the server, just the name of them and the uh, RPC settings. But if we look here at this damage entity function, nothing happens here. But when you call the RPC, it's happening on the server. You're calling this function on the server. So if we go to the server, when this function is called on the server, we store in our player data that, hey, this, this guy took damage. So if we go in here, we store it. I store it in a dictionary. And then anytime the health changes, I call this RPC function called player health changed. And I say to every single client, I tell them, hey, this peer has new health of this much health. Then on the client side, when this function gets called, this player health changed, we emit a signal saying, hey, this peer ID has a new health. And if we follow this signal, we see in our player manager, when this, this server emits the signal, it connects to this function. And on this function, then we set the new health into the health component and we store it there. So that's how these variables can get passed from the client to the server and then back to the other clients. With the technical basics out of the way, now we can talk about the cool stuff. So on the server here, I have this little GUI for controlling it. I added all these different game modes. So we have players versus the environment. We have a free for all. And then I remade the game mode from Gary's mod, Trouble in Trader Town. Basically how the game mode works is one of the players is a trader who has to kill the other players and the other guys have to figure out which one of them is the traitor. I also added a free-for-all game mode that keeps track of how many times each player dies and then the person with the least amount of deaths wins. I added this debugging tool where it freezes everyone's game as soon as someone takes damage, which helps me for understanding whether or not things are actually being synced between the server and the client. Another cool feature I added is the ability to, to generate random procedurally generated levels. So if I type in a seed here and I press generate, it will create this dungeon and send it to each of the players. Oh, this is kind of a bad one. Let's add another one. Let's do two. There we go. So it'll generate a dungeon procedurally and then place all these tiles and you can actually update it mid-game and it'll update for each of the players. So the generation is done on the server and then the server serializes all the coordinates and sends them out to each of the clients who then replicates the dungeon that was created. I also added the ability to switch the game level at runtime. So now I can load this different level. I spent a lot of my life making maps for Gary's Mod, but recently I found this add-on for Blender that allows you to import 
source engine maps into Blender. And then from Blender, you can export them into Godot. So now all the hard work I spent over all those years, I can take that and put my old maps into my new games, which is super exciting. My buddy Xavier is learning how to 3D model and he made all these cool hats that the players can select and then it'll update across the network so you can see what hats everyone else is wearing. And he made a whole bunch of them, so pretty awesome. I managed to get the game running on Linux, but one thing I had to do was switch the rendering mode from Forward Plus to Compatibility Mode. Um, and I also am now able to host the server on my old Linux machine. For the planning of this project, I used the website Miro.com. This is pretty helpful using their mind map tool because you can take like a feature like players taking damage and then if you get stuck at any point you just break it down into the different steps you need to take in order to make it happen and then you just keep breaking it down until it's at its simplest simplest steps. I also use the kitchen timer working in 45 minute chunks and that really helped improve my perception of time so I didn't get too lost in the code. There were a lot of tutorials that I followed over the past year that helped me a lot. I'll try to leave them in the description. This week was pretty awesome. I never would have thought that I could have built something like this, but following consistent small steps is what got me here over the last couple of years. And I'm really excited about the future. What's next for me? I think I'm gonna chill for a little bit and then probably build another multiplayer game from scratch so I can clean up the system architecture and refactor all the code so that it's really, really efficient.